Hey, good day there. This is Joe Van Cleve. Many of you have been interested in this film drying cabinet that I have uh, mentioned uh, periodically in my photography videos and on my blog. And one of you in particular had requested that I do a video about this cabinet. And so today's video is going to be about my homemade film drying cabinet. We're going to take a look at it, how it's uh, designed and laid out, what the parts are composed of, how it's constructed and how it works. And hopefully this will give you a good idea for for making your own. These are really pretty easy to make. They're just a box with a HEPA filtered air and a light bulb basically. So let's take a look at the film drying cabinet. Well this is the film drying cabinet in my nice fairly clean patio room um, which is where we're going to show most of the cabinet's details. But Keep in mind that this film drying cabinet doesn't actually get stored in a nice, clean, neat room like this. It gets stored out in my garage, which is very dirty. So the thing about this is this has been sitting in my garage for a couple years. Before I started shooting the video this morning, preparing for it, I had to go out and <laughs> vacuum off the top of this film drying cabinet. I had about a quarter inch of dirt on it. The sides are all caked in dust. The bottom, where the feet are, had a lot of dust. But, in spite of all that, and it's in a dirty, dirty garage that's difficult to keep clean because it gets opened and the dust comes in, and this is New Mexico. Um, in spite of all that, I get really good results, really clean film by using this cabinet, which is testimony to how well the filtration system in here works. So let's take a look, closer look at the cabinet. What you need uh, for drying a film uh, dust free is a miniature clean room. And a clean room is essentially a very clean uh, space that has what's called laminar airflow. This is air that's been filtered with a HEPA filter, so there's uh, all the big particles are filtered out. There's only very, very fine particles in the air, if, if at all. And then you have air flowing from the top down in a laminar flow, not turbulent flow. Uh, the clean room was invented in Albuquerque, New Mexico in the early 1960s at Sandia National Laboratories. And they dis uh, discovered that Normal airflow in normal rooms is turbulent. You have these rotors of wind and it causes dust particles to circulate and get trapped in areas that gets picked up later on and deposited on surfaces that you don't want. But top-down laminar airflow removes all the dust and keeps it from getting trapped in places where it'll later get into areas you don't want it. So what we want in a box, we want a fairly airtight box we want some fans on top that will blow the air at a smooth, gentle rate. And we want HEPA filter to filter the air. And then we want a light bulb, an incandescent light bulb, to heat up the air enough to make it nice and warm so the film will dry. And that's essentially all you need is those elements. HEPA filtered air, laminar airflow, and a hot light bulb in a fairly airtight box. Let's go take a look at the details of what I built. So I'm going to show you all the features of my uh, film drying cabinet. And then we'll talk about how I built it, what it's made of, and how to construct it. Okay, so let's start with all the features. In the front here, we have two switches. One for the fan and one for the light bulb. These two are filters, HEPA filters. These are the air intakes for the, uh, for the air for the cabinet. Um, this is the door of the cabinet. And there is a latch on the side right here. There's also two handles where you can fairly easily carry the cabinet, pick it up. It's not heavy at all. I'm going to unlatch it and I'm going to turn on the light. So there is a fan on top that blows air down and it's closer to the door than it is to the back of the cabinet 
hopefully if there's any dust leaking in from the door seal, it's going to push it down away from the film. There is a 100 watt incandescent light bulb in the back here, and that light bulb is for the, filter, for the heating of the air to make it nice and warm. I have a wire attached across the top with a bunch of bulldog clips, and these clips I use, um, for instance, this one here is holding a strip of film. This is actually some medium format film I shot in a multi-shot pinhole camera. Uh, and so down at the bottom of the cabinet, there is a air trap. Down at the bottom of the cabinet, the air comes through this gap and is exited at the floor down here. So hopefully we have laminar airflow going all the way down the cabinet to the bottom and then exiting outside underneath the door. There is a gasket of uh, felt, adhesive craft felt, that covers the entire door uh, ceiling area. And then on the door itself, we have this adhesive foamy weather stripping. So when you close the door, you'll have a fairly light tight seal. The HEPA filters can be replaced and they're accessed by taking off these eight thumb screws. And we'll do that in a minute and show you the wiring and everything. So the cabinet, of course, has electrical wire going into the back of it. It's a three-prong wire. And let's look at the electrical parts now. Okay, I've taken off all eight of the thumb screws and just set them up on top. This uh, cabinet was made from scrap materials and this was some paneling I had from when I made my man cave shed. So I'm going to take this panel off. This is the inside of the electrical part. So the power cord comes in from through the back and it goes over to this terminal strip and from there I have wires connecting to the light bulb here and to the fan and to the two front switches. So all my connections, I don't know if you can see back in here, but all my connections are for instance uh, soldered onto the switches with heat shrink tubing and then they're reinforced with uh, cable ties so they won't pull out. So everything is pretty nicely wired up, fairly, I think it's safe. Okay, so let's look at the wiring of the film drying cabinet. We'll start on the left, and it's a three-prong connector, so we're just going to have the third ground prong. You're going to want to connect that to the metal uh, aluminum flashing, uh, the framework of the cabinet, just for safety. So you're going to have neutral and hot. And so let's just draw neutral and hot coming in. And so what you're going to want is essentially two circuits. One circuit is going to be, is going to have a switch and it's going to have your light bulb. Okay, so this is the switch for the light bulb. When you close it, you'll have 120 volts going through that circuit and lighting the light bulb. The other circuit is going to have another switch and it's going to have the fan motor right? And that's all there is. So there's two switches, there's two parallel circuits, one for the light bulb, one for the fan. You can turn on each one individually. And again, the, the third wire ground is just you want to put it on the ground of your uh, cabinet just for safety. Well, that's it, a very simple circuit. And so wiring it up, I'm using a terminal strip, so I'm bringing the AC in on a terminal strip and then I'm splitting it out to all these different points. Okay, so for the terminal strip, let's just draw with six connections. So I come in with my neutral and my hot AC on two strips. I'm going to jumper them to these other pairs, and then this pair goes out to my f fan circuit, let's say. And this pair goes out to the light circuit. And so these two for the fan circuit, um, one is going to go to the switch. Here's my toggle switch. The other wire goes to the fan motor, and it, the other one comes back to here. The light, same way, one wire goes to the switch for the light. The other wire goes to the base of the light bulb socket. 
and the other one comes back to here. So that's pretty much how the terminal strip is used to wire up uh, the circuit. So now the two HEPA filters are up here. Those can be removed. Actually, they will pull out from the front if I'm not mistaken, but they're very tight. These HEPA filters are for a certain type of vacuum cleaner. Okay, so that's, I, I sort of built this whole thing around this kind of HEPA filter. The parts, the electrical parts, I all got from, uh, from Radio Shack. And whatever your local uh, electronic supplier in your area is, that's what you can use. But it's a fairly nice wiring job. I think it's pretty safe. Now, as far as the construction method of building this storage cabinet, I'm using the same construction method that I've used for building a lot of my larger pinhole cameras. I'm using these three-quarter inch, uh, I believe they're spruce, square finish grade dowels that you get at the big hardware stores. And I simply make a frame of these dowels. Um, the pieces are connected together by clamping them, pre-drilling a pilot hole, putting a countersunk screw in with glue. So they're screwed and glued together, these frames are. So it's a very lightweight and strong type of structure. Then the sheathing that covers the skin of this is aluminum flashing. And this comes in rolls in the roofing section of your hardware store. It's flashing used for roofing and it's very thin and made of aluminum. It rolls out straight and you can cut it with a paper trimmer with a guillotine type paper trimmer. And what I've done is on the outer parts here, I'm using the double sided foamy adhesive tape along the sticks. I've stuck the aluminum skin to that and then I've screwed them down with reinforcing them with these screws. And that's essentially how I did it all around. And then the inner joints, I also caulk them with some RTV silicon caulk to keep it more airtight. So all the joints are caulked. If you were making a pinhole camera using the same method, the only thing you would need to do additionally is to paint it black, but we don't need to worry about that. It doesn't need to be black. Um, again, the door uses a long piano hinge that goes the full length of the door, the full height of the door, so it opens up nicely and it's all put together with just with simple screws. So to reinforce the side of the cabinet, I built this frame this three-sided frame, so there was a little bit of rigidity. I discovered that after having built this, this was a good place to put a set of handles. So the handles are bolted together, uh, connected to the wooden brace there on either side, and you can pick up the cabinet fairly easily. The cabinet does have wheels, caster wheels on the bottom, but I discovered only after building it that they're really kind of too small and they're too close together and the cabinet kind of wants to tip a little bit when you try rolling it so if I had to build this over again I probably wouldn't even use casters because this thing is so light you can pick it up so easily and move it and so there's another feature I discovered after having built it which involves this brace here, and it makes a, a ledge. So after having built this for use with film, and by the way, I didn't mention this, but it's tall enough. The reason why it's so tall is to enable you to use a 36 exposure roll of film to have the full length, a little bit of extra room down there. But I decided I also wanted a place to dry uh, fiber-based prints, and because I have this ledge I had already built, I went to the hardware store and they have do-it-yourself window screen kits and you can build screens of any size. You buy the channel, you buy the corner fittings, you cut the channel to length, put the corner fittings in there and put your own screen in. So I have made four of these screens with the idea of sandwiching fiber-based prints in here and just stacking them up and then I could just let the laminar airflow run down through there and dry them. As it turns out, the fiber-based paper doesn't dry all that flat in the screens because there is some some separation between them right so it still it still can curl so instead what I've done is I've gone to using sheets of glass and I will take a piece of fiber based paper like a print and I will tape it down to a sheet of glass uh, front side up with drafting tape which is a kind of tape that's designed to go onto paper without tearing and then I'll, I'll set these prints up like this I can set here, 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 and then it just 
the laminar, the hot or the warm laminar air comes down and it dries the prints nicely, nice and flat. Oh yeah, let's turn on the fan. So this is a simple computer fan from Radio Shack, 120 volt AC. But that's the basic drying cabinet. This is very easy to make and it doesn't even involve any plans. I built this without any plans at all. So if I was going to do this all over again, uh, I would do a few things differently. First of all, the top section where the electrical wiring is and the uh, HEPA filter and the fan, I would make that shorter. It's about 8 or 10 inches, probably 8 inches tall. I would make it, I think I could make it down to 4 inches and still be able to access uh, changing the filters and repairing the wiring if I ever had a problem like that. So I would reduce the height of that. Secondly, the height of the cabinet inside, yes, it's designed for a 36 exposure roll of film, but it's probably a little bit too tall, so I'd make it a little shorter. Then um, that air trap on the bottom underneath where it comes out, I think I like that. I might make it a little shorter, like two inches instead of four inches. And then I would not use casters. I would just have it on the ground or build some kind of system where the casters are on the side. Uh, down on the corner instead of on the bottom, so the wheels are barely below the bottom of the cabinet, so it's not so tall. And I would also give it a little bit broader footprint because it really is top heavy and those little tiny casters are so close together it wants to tip over when you try rolling it. So I really kind of just pick it up. Uh, those are the only real changes I would do. I think I really like the way it works. Um, uh, the the middle brackets around the side of the frame that I use to put those screens on, I might decide to build some kind of a wooden holder that slips on that that I can put my sheets of glass in vertically like with little slots instead of just sitting them on those screens. And I could that's a change I could do. It's just an extra little bracket I could build that goes in there. But the thing you need to know about building one of these cabinets is you don't really need any blueprints. The idea is you're going to build a box out of these three, uh, I think they're seven eighths inch wide uh, spruce maybe. Uh, sticks that you see at the hardware store and uh, you're going to pre-drill the holes for the little screws countersink the holes so the screws are flush um, and because the wood is so thin if you just try screwing it putting a screw in without a, a, a pilot hole it'll split the wood so you got to use pilot hole and you got a countersink countersinking bit to make those screws flush this isn't real difficult woodworking these are basic skills you can do with a hand drill um, and the little sticks cut real easy with a little miter saw, a tiny little miter saw, even a hacksaw. You don't need to get fancy with it. They glue and screw together. You make a framework like this and then you buy the rolls of sheathing, aluminum rolls. They're like this, this much, I don't know what, 30 feet or so. And they come in various widths. Buy the roll of aluminum that you need. You can cut it with one of those guillotine paper trimmers uh, and they stay nice and smooth on the edge. It doesn't wrinkle them real badly. And then you use that foamy double-sided tape, stick the aluminum on, and then drill some holes and put your little screws in. It's a real easy construction method. It's very lightweight, and once the aluminum skin is on, those wooden frames get triangulated into being very rigid, and it's sort of like a semi-monocoque construction technique. Um, so that is the film drying cabinet. It's basically a box with HEPA filtered air, laminar airflow, a hot incandescent light bulb, and fairly airtight. And that's what you need to dry film, and it works really good even in my filthy, dusty, dirty garage. I have the cleanest film that I've ever had using this method. And I used to hang my film in the shower. I would run the shower, hot water, get it all steamy, get all the dust out of the room. No, this still works better. So it's a great thing to do. Oh, if you don't, if you're not using uh, long strips of roll film, if you're interested more like in drying prints, you can build a shorter cabinet, maybe a print drying cabinet that's not as tall and it just sits on a, on a table. It doesn't have to be a big tall thing like this. Well, okay, until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve and have yourself a great day.